Renaissance philosophy has often been characterized as syncretism, as it encompassed various philosophical, scientific, and religious trends. This characterization was due to the humanist revival and the deception of ancient learning along with the accumulation of new information gathered by travelers and compilers. Figures such as Marsilio Figino and Giovanni Pico della Mirandola were considered to be representative of this syncretism. Japan's religious and intellectual tendency of the time was also syncretistic, as is shown in the fusion of Shintoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism. Buddhism was even divided into eight or twelve sects at least, with the arrival of the Jesuit missionaries in 1549 onwards. Christianity was introduced as a force, force into this matrix. By this uh, syncretic feature and this uh, contemporary, the other contemporary events, the period can be regarded as a Renaissance age in Japanese history. One generation after the Reformation began in 1517, Roman Catholicism sought the pure form of Christianity at Pontes, both in Europe and abroad. Japan's Christian century emerged in this historical context to reconsider the intellectual connection between Europe and Japan during this period I would like to present the case of Fabian Fukan. Fabian Fukan was probably born in 1565 in Kaga or Echu, where a sect of Buddhism, Ikkoshu, was firmly planted. Moving to Kyoto, he became a Zen bronze, bonze. His mother served at the court of Kitano Mandokoro, the wife of Teotomi Hideyoshi, who was the most powerful lord of the period. In 1583, Fabian was baptized with his mother and went to a seminary in Osaka. In 1586, he entered the Society of Jesus as a frater or a Ilman, equivalent to the Japanese catechist, Dojuku. Also, Fabian was active in Jesuit missions for many <coughs> years and studied Latin as a scholarly Dojuku. He was never ordained as a priest, Padre. Japanese catechists played crucial roles in the Jesuit missions of the 1580s. They were active in preaching among local people and translating the Bible and Western classics into Japanese. Under these circumstances, the mission consultations of Japan held in 1580 and 1581 agreed to accept the, the catechists who received a solid theological and philosophical education into the Jesuit order. Following this, the Jesuits opened one novitiate in Bungo Uski to seminaries in Azuchi and Arima, along with the college Correggio in Bungo Funai. Later, the college moved from Funai to several towns in succession, finally setting in Nagasaki. At the same time, Alessandro Bagnano, the visitor of the Jesuit order, 
compiled a new catechism, Catechismus Christianae Fidei, published in 1586 for the formation of Japanese clergy, Japanese clergy. Fabian's theological education was likely based on this <coughs> Demonic possession. <laughs> After converting Hakata, the major city of North Kyushu, the Lord Hideyoshi issued the order to expel Christian priests in 1587. Consequently, Fabian exiled to Yamaguchi, the western region of the mainland, then to Nagasaki, Kazusa, and Amakusa in Kyushu. In 1592, he was recorded in a list of residents of the Jesuit college, Korecho, in Amakusa, as a master of the Japanese language, with a little knowledge of Latin. Fabian's language skills were, however, quite good. <coughs> the Jesuits regarded him as a highly valuable member. Serving as an interpreter, Fabian wrote a simplified version of the tale of the Heike, uh, Nihon no Kotoba to Historia. <coughs> which was a dialogue on the language and history of Japan between Umarojo and Kengyo, uh, typeset in Roman letters and published in 1592. Um, <coughs> well, Fabian uh, was a uh, vulgar humanist. Uh, as, uh, this morning, uh, uh, Bachmann has, uh, uh, has shown us uh, as a Latin, Latin humanist, Haramarchino. Uh, Whereas, uh, uh, I think, uh, Fabian was a vulgar humanist. <coughs> he also uh, participated in the partial translation of Aesop Fables, published as Aesopo no Pablas. Fabian's value to Jesuit missions cannot be reduced to his linguistic ability and role as mediator. Because of his educational background, he was familiar with both European and Asian systems of philosophy and religion. Several popular anti-Christian writings of the Edo uh, <coughs> that are later uh, depicted him as uh, Zen bonds, uh, writings of the Edo era later depicted him as a Zen bonds before he converted to Christianity. Indeed, he was a perfect cultural mediator and propagator of the Jesuit missions. Uh, the Jesuit uh, disliked uh, Buddhism and did everything to undermine it. Uh, various documents attest that Fabian was involved in the interreligious debates. His public appearance as a Christian advocate and the opponent of Buddhism is reported in several occasions, including public disputations and funeral sermons. In this respect, he can be compared to uh, typically rhetorical humanists of the Italian Renaissance, like the following uh, same cases. Some accounts were, of course, fictitious, 
as shown in a dispute of, of the Nambanji Kohaiki uh, between uh, Fabian uh, Bayan and Hakuo. But other accounts were genuine, such as a, a notorious debate with neo Confucianist Hayashi Razan, who was to become the influential advisor to the Tokugawa government. According to Razan, in 1606, he and his brother Nobuzumi met Fabian through the mediation of Teitoku Matsunaga, all the disciples of Fujiwara Seika. They crashed over the earth's roundness and the Christian view of God and creation. In the same busy year, other events attracted public attention to Fabian. In Hakata, he delivered a sermon on the third anniversary of the death of a famous Christian lord, Kuroda Josui Naramasa, and won much public respect. By contrast, his sermon in Kyoto angered Buddhist priests. The latter was given at the funeral of a Christian noble woman, Magdalena, who was the daughter of Kyogoku Maria and the wife of Kutsuki Nobutsuna. Nobutsuna. In this sermon, Fabian piously attacked Buddhism for being unable to pro provide salvation. The annual letters of the Jesuits also recorded his debate with the Buddhist forms from the sect Nichiren in 1606. It addressed the immortality, the immortality of the human soul and salvation, an important philosophical issue of the time in Europe. Today, Fabian is remembered for his two seemingly contradictory writings, Miotei Mondo and Hard Times. The first treatise was set in the form of dialogue between Myoshu and Yutei in three books, a refutation of Buddhism. Second, a refutation of Confucianism and Shinto. And last, apologetic on Christianity. The second treatise was written after Fabian abandoned Christianity. In its first part, he explains and refutes basic Christian doctrines in seven steps, comprising the Christian concept of God, the differentiation of anima naturalis, sensitiva, and vegetativa, the fall of the human being, the role of Jesus as a savior of mankind, and the Ten Commandments. In its final part, he questions the value of Christianity, mainly with regards to the conduct of the missionaries and other Christians. Why did Fabian abandon Christianity and the Society of Jesus? There are some hints in his last chapter of his Hadaius. There, he blames the Jesuits for their arrogant behaviors toward Japanese, especially for their refusal to allow local catechists into priesthood. I quote, because they are arrogant people, they, they do not even consider Japanese to be human beings. Moreover, they do not let Japanese become powerless. You can imagine how you feel when you cannot realize your heart's desire. Actually, Fabian was not among 15 Japanese who were ordained as priests between 1601 and 1614. 
both Gyote Mondo and Hadaius as a works written by learned man who was educated in the Jesuit school and lived among the Jesuit missionary for almost 20 years. 20 years. Before becoming Christian in man, he was a Zen bones and learned the theological doctrines of both camps in detail. As I said before, uh, the Jesuit education of local students was designed to replace Japanese religious ideas by the Christian views of human being and the world. Being a Japanese and having once been a Buddhist born, distanced Fabian from the missionaries and other seminarists. He was deeply familiar with popular Japanese religion, which was a fusion Buddhist and uh, neo-Confucian currents with uh, Sinto's mythologies and probably even with some hints of popular Christianity. Against the background of this syncretism, let us consider how these elements were reflected in Fabian's Yote Mondo and Hadais. In the former work, Fabian the Christian explains and criticizes the character characteristics of Shintoism, Confucianism, and all sects of Buddhism. He tried to show that the ideas advanced in those currents are based on an unsound scientific worldview, especially on the Buddhist notion of Shimisen. He insists that Asian religions and philosophical philosophies have no power to save the human beings. Let us remember that this excellent work was a dialogue between two women with concrete names, like Renaissance dialogues, not like medieval dialogues with abstract names such as anger and the mind. In the latter work, Fabian apostate, the apostate does not simply replace his former Christian belief with Buddhism or other religious currents. Instead, he adapted pluralistic view. His commitment to plurality is obvious in the way he, co he contrasts the Christian ideas of the creator, God, with Buddhist, Confucian, and Sinto narratives of the world formation. He also opposed the Christian claim of universal truth with his pluralistic vision by emphasizing the, uh, the, the coexistence of Buddhism, Shinto, and Confucianism. For him, this vision was confirmed by the particular situation of Japan as a land of multiple gods and the eastward extremity of the land of Buddhas. In conclusion, I would like to call Fabian as it were a parinodist in the Renaissance. For he decanted in the Hadaius the theory which had emphasized in the third part of the Myote Mondo. Finally, Buddha, Confucius, native Japanese gods, and the god seem him, so to speak, impostores, impostores, was on three. He is near to a skeptic, but never a fideist, because he was a greatly logical advocate. What did he accept as true? It was a natural that gratifies him and corresponds to his feeling. He was seeking for it as uh, explorator, not as transfuga. Uh, as an explorator, not as transfuga. 
also he was sometimes a Zen Buddhist and other times a Christian. Thank you.